Welcome back to Spider-Man 2002, the game thing. The I web attack that we- God, what? this game really opens up where I think it's going to. Well, let's see. Right after the Craven stuff. No more oh my freaking God! Very good, Jova. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm usually against cutting content, but looking back, I think the game is better off without the the Craven part, honestly. So, um, let me get this straight. We don't even get a leading cutscene after he defeats Craven. Okay. You know, okay, in the version that I played, which was every version except the Xbox version, you know that scene where Green Goblin literally hops up after Peter Parker foils his stuff? Yeah, then that leads right to this scene where he chases after him, which you know makes sense. Yet here, Norman Osborn hires Craven. Out of the blue, Spider-Man does his thing, and then now we're to Green Back Goblin to this. now chasing after Spider-Man, so... Okay! The Craven thing just feels like a big-lipped alligator thing. moment. <laughs> so, Dweeb, do you want to ask the obvious question, pacing lies here? Um, what was the point of the Craven stuff? Not just yeah, that, not that it's not just that, but that it's pointless, that, Dweebs. It's the fact that it li they literally inter- it's literally like, imagine if a movie literally suddenly switch in the middle of a chase sequence change to something completely different that's never been here before for no real reason and then when it's over then we go back to the chase sequence like that's it's basically like, what they're doing here it's like if an oliver and company like right after the heroes manage to rescue the girl who adopts oliver like right before the villain chases after them he then hires a hitman then the hitman <laughs> fails and then he chases after them like and it's literally the same scenes from the movie. Like, seriously, that's how it went in the original. It's like, after Peter Parker foiled his plans, he then chased after him and led to this level, which was also at nighttime, like in that scene. I really... Here, they put a Craven section. Uh... had cutscenes and everything. I really would love to hear... Him out of the blue. I would love to, see, to hear an interview from the developers of this game, just so they could try to explain what the hell happened with this this whole Craven thing. Why is it exclusive to the Xbox? Why does the game just suddenly stop and it doesn't make any sense? Anyway, just to go back to the game itself, uh, what happened earlier is uh, it was a level where I was supposed to destroy his razor bats with my web, and after you defeat 50 of them, then the, you can just go here to hide and the level ends. Of course. So. so, yeah, it it's even okay. So, you know, it made sense about it being short in the original since, you know, it was after the long battle and him taking care of the bombs and also rescuing Mary Jane all in the same day and night. But here, it's just a tiny little blurb right after he defeats yeah, Craven. The, the, also, the problem, the, well, to be fair, the problem here just seems to be the pacing itself. If they just plastered this level in other part of the game, it would have been just fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it should have happened. The Craven part should have happened before um, the, the Green Goblin stuff. Yeah. Like, this may be one of the very few times I've ever seen the addition of content actually make a game less good to me. Mm. It's, because, it, it, it's mostly because to you, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Trust me. Nam yeah. uh, uh, Jova, Namco Banda in general will have to like a word with you. A question well, to you. Okay, Sorry. aside from them, obviously. Oh, and here you go. This is the scene where Norman finds out of. Uh, there you go. <laughs> a tangled web we weave. Ha 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 ha. Ah, Willem, never You're change. You're so funny. Anyway. Uh, to your question, have you actually played this game back in the day? Nope. Well, trust me. If you were like me and Jova and grew up with the non Xbox version, trust me, you would know because. It's after jarring, after yeah, growing definitely. after growing up with that incomplete version, this Craven thing just sticks out like a sore thumb. It feels like a fan just put plastered in it, in, uh, plastered the part into it. <laughs> and the weird thing is that as a paradox, the edit content actually makes the game feel incomplete compared to the supposedly actual incomplete version. Ain't I, that a paradox? It's like I said, I really would love to see to hear an interview from the developers explain this because what was even the reason behind this? What happened? I mean, and it's not to say, I mean, okay, compare how they handled Craven to how they've handled the other villains game. Yes, it's been a bit 
I- iffy here and there, but for the most part, the main comic book villains have gotten their own proper stages and content surrounding them. I mean, you know, even Scorpion, who only had like two levels, still gets enough of a meaty campaign enough section and, you know, has a proper we'll boss fight here and there. And, you know, of course, Vulture and uh, Shocker also had their own just dues. But with Craven, it's literally one level. Anyway, to recap, basically, Peter managed to find a piece of uh, the Goblin's Guide. Uh, one, sorry, one of the pieces of the Razor Bats. And he noticed that it has the mark of Oscorp. You know, uh, Norman, you probably shouldn't have put the Oscorp logo in your Razor Bats. Just saying. Yeah. Um, well, to be fair, in Spectacular Spider-Man, he actually does use that as a ploy to say that Green Goblin stole his tech, which allows him to make insurance off of the stolen tech. It's kind of like in Amazing Spider-Man, so where the, of, the camera says, property of Peter Parker. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, it is explained in Spectacular... Well, okay, maybe but not But this is not Spectacular itself. Spider-Man. This is even before that show. So. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I'm just saying, I guess, in a business sense, it makes sense, since, you know, at worst, people would assume he just makes insurance off of it. However, when Peter gets his hands on it, yeah, that at least lets him know that he should maybe check out Oscorp. So, yeah, uh, ob- so, yeah obviously, Gr- the Green Goblin is somehow linked to Oscorp, so Peter decided to infiltrate uh, Oscorp so he can try to find out more about the Goblin. Oh, boy. If there's one thing I remember, it's that these stealth sections get rather... Well, uh, let's just it's not, it's, say, it's not so much. Well, it, I think the stealth is fine. They start off. They start it, off fine enough. It's just when the robots get introduced. No, 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 no. It's not so much the robots to me, Joe. It's the laser, the part with the lasers that pisses me the fuck off. But oh, we'll, but we'll get, but we'll get to that. I remember when I was way younger, I actually used the level cheat select code. I made up for that. Wait, what the heck? What? I thought I heard someone else speaking during that line. Like, ah. it's 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 the, it's the NPCs, Joe. But basically, the NPCs while they're patrolling, they also randomly say some banter, and that's what you heard. Yeah. It didn't even sound like him talking. He was just going groaning like he was a zombie. Oh, that's because that's because remember they're night guards, so obviously they're sleepy. A lot of times. I thought you were about to say McGuire for a second there, Jova. No, no. Basically, Jova. A lot of times you can actually hear the night guards go, as in they're sleepy and stuff. Sure. That's just. That's what you heard. Professionals. Do I get that? It's just it's always weird how they leak over into the cuts. It's because the the way the game is programmed, they forgot to mute the the random chatter in the cutscenes themselves because the cutscenes are done still within the actual game environment, and that's why the the random programming of the lines still happens. They they didn't account for that. Anyway, you know. Not to throw shade at the Xbox, but I kind of have to wonder if a lot of these problems and hiccups mainly show up in the Xbox no. version. Because as someone who I... grew up with the GameCube version, I can tell you that the GameCube version suffers from this problem as well. The only uh, real, well, the I o- played the PS2 version, so maybe I'm misremembering. The only disadvantage, uh, the PS2 and X. Well, I never played the PS2 version. The only disadvantage the GameCube version has is the the lack of a Craven part, which, if you ask me, also kind of same for the PS2. But you know, uh, it's already known. But anyway, the point is, yeah. What happens is, in order to get through a, a certain big door in Oscorp, you have to get a password. The problem is that that password is spread over over five computers. Each computer has a piece of the password. So we have to get to all computers and find a piece of that. We already found one. Uh, so basically, just keep finding computers so you can see. If you So Base. a combination Think of, of stealth and fetch quest. Think of it like Metal Gear Solid. Except not as flushed out. And you don't have to punch uh, a random key card in the door until it works. So. <laughs> oh, the key cards. A blight and otherwise fantastic game, even with Metal Gear 2. So right. quiet. Well. Stealth. Ah! Okay, no, so. I was referring to the game. As always. As always, uh, make sure you stay in the shadows. Um, your face icon in the top left corner is your sign of whether or not you're visible to the bad guys. So just keep a... This particular... Um, don't get me wrong, you can complete this level even if you get caught. But it will be way harder because you're going to have to fight the, um, the guards. Uh, the robots will come in and it's going to be a fucking... Bi- just, it, it's, it's for your best that you just remain... Try to be stealthy because otherwise they'll That's just make be- life harder for you. Yeah, 
Now again, the stealth isn't too bad until you get with the security lasers. This particular part is fine. I, I'm. Uh, uh, it, it would be. F it's one of those things where. My only problem with this part, aside from the lasers, is that you know I feel that the game could have maybe had a few more stealth sections because uh, I'm not saying that you know this is a bad stealth level. It's just like oh, compared to most of the levels we've been doing in this game, it kind of sticks out. Hopefully. Hopefully this game will eventually be become backwards compatible with the Xbox One and more and more audiences can finally try out the Xbox version, I guess. Yeah. There we go. I mean, the game is backwards compatible with the 360, so if you, if you still have your 360, you can still play it. Like, that's what I'm doing. And yeah, I definitely recommend playing all three games of the Spider-Man movie trilogy. Yeah, one uh... is not perfect. But no, I'm sorry, Jova. Spider-Man Free, the game sucks major ass. <laughs> well, I might forget. Yeah, are you sure you're not talking about the Wii version? Uh, I'm yeah. both. Well, um... I thought the PS3 version of Spider-Man Free was better. I mean, don't get me wrong; it still has. Wait, is it, isn't the Wii? Free. Aren't the Wii and PS2 versions the same? I mean, no, I've heard, PS3 I've heard the PS3 version. I've heard... No, I've heard the I've heard the Wii version specifically is god awful. I've, the, I've actually well, the seen one, it in action. Well, the one I well the one I played was the PS2 version, and it was terrible. I can tell you that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. However, the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions are different from the PS2 and Wii versions. Like they have different it's stories, like Sonic different Alicia. villains. Well, okay, let me put it at this. They have different story bits, they have different villains here and there, and yeah, some sections that are scripted in the PS2 and Wii versions are not in the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. It's like comparing the Transformers games on Wii to their PS3 and Xbox 360 counterparts, starting with Revenge of the Fallen. So yeah, this is how security works here at Oscorp. Hide the password to the important door uh, in five different computers. Sure, why not? Yo was a little paranoid. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. The stealth section were definitely better in Shadow Dimensions. Well, uh, I'm pretty, Shadow well, Dimensions came out when again? 2010. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, this was 2002. So obviously by that point. But no, I mean, yeah, they, they got refined later on. <coughs> Arkham. Actually, Jova, the games were developed at the same time. So even if they tried supposedly to copy it, they didn't have much to work with. Yeah, just it doesn't help that later Spider-Man games became more blatantly trying to be Arkham. Later ones, Jova, I was referring only to Shadow Dimension. Although I still am curious enough to try Edge of Time. Which is oh, trust me, Edge of Time is bad, but it's uh, it's the kind of bad that's good to riff on. Which is interesting because the PS4 Insomnia game looks like it's still taking a couple of cues from uh, from the Arkham games as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's there. You go. See, you get that. Now you get to see what happens oh, if you get caught. So how do you tr how do you get to save zones? Uh, okay, uh, there you go. There's the robots. Go ahead, Jova. Okay, these robots can snipe you really hard. They can shoot you down, and yeah, just like in Carmen San Diego, they're best taken out from the back. <laughs> Fortunately, I already have all the all, the, all the entire password, so I can just go straight to the door. But yeah, you better hurry because trust me, they will track you down. Uh, like more security robots. Like spider slayers eat your heart out. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so you have to figure out the order. Uh, red lorry, yellow lorry. Think about it, Webs. Beep. Nope. I love how that Spider Man is. He goes from he go, goes from blue to slightly less blue all the way till the till it's pink. It. There you go. All right, I got it. All right, we're in now. There you go. And that robot stops attacking us. Well, we went for the <laughs> door, <laughs> so. Yep. Breaking and entering. R for, the, polite. R for the neighborhood Spider-Man, breaking and entering into a major corporation. <laughs> uh, compared, to this, compared to the stuff he did in the 60s cartoon, it's tame. Yeah. Oh god, the 60s cartoon. <laughs> Alright. And now, mysteriously, we're back to not being seen again. Oh, okay, listen here. Listen, Amtower, those are the kinds of thoughts you'd best keep to yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, where's your desire to be God? What are you guys cooking up here? I swear I didn't know Oscorp even had a chemical weapons division. You have to believe me. Chemical Ooh, weapons. chemical weapons. Ooh. What is this, Alchemax? So apparently Norman is also a terrorist. The research is too heavily protected. That's where I come in. I'll take care of those chemicals. So yeah, I don't know where the hell this subplot came from, but yeah, now we're yeah, uh, now we're pre now we're now we're preventing Oscar from fabricating chemical weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Uh, Teo, uh, is this based yeah, on so anything from the comics? I'm sorry. Can you can you repeat that? Is it, chemical it, warfare with the Green Goblin? Yeah. Is there any comic where Oscorp is manufacturing chemical weapons? Well, his pumpkin bombs contain hallucinogenic substances, if I recall. And that would be fine. The or problem in, is that um, wait till you see. Two freaking incinerating. Uh, okay, bombs. just okay. I just just wait and see what scale of chemical weapons they're doing. Like not only that, but there are scientists who are in on but, stuff here and there. But no, usually that's from for the Alchemist Corporation in the Spider-Man 2099 uh, stories. Weird. Yeah, I mean, and this doesn't really tie into the main overarching plot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It leads to how Peter finds out what Norman's up to, but the fact that he finds out what Norman's up to has is just by coincidence after he deals with this chemical warfare problem. And something else that I And there we go. Dark. Here are the the lights. If one, if any of those touch you, you get caught. You you get uh, found out. So you have to try your best to cast your web right at the instant where there's none of them on uh, in front of you. And uh, unlike in the other building, this is in a more narrow point, so you're gonna have an even tougher time with the robots here. Yeah. Wait, why can't we have done that before? Done what? That's why. Yeah, there's just web sync to the roof. Oh. Because we just did. Lives. Anyway, there you go. See, there's e they, they even put oh, fucking man, lasers, lasers, lasers in the ceiling. The ceiling. <laughs> just in case, just in case a Spider Man happens to be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is where Mark Webb got the inspiration for that scene near the end. Reminder, reminder. We can assume that they made these lasers before Spider Man was even a thing. So that means that Norman Osborn. Somehow predicted that someone might try and use the ceiling. <laughs> huh. That's that's kind of clever. Okay, okay. What we're actually it's supposed to do paranoid. paranoid, but yeah. What we're actually supposed to do in this level is we're supposed to get to the specific uh, points where the chemical weapons are being made. There you go. The doctor is about to tell us. Wow, this really is Metal Gear Spider Man. We're even having um chemical weapons. <laughs> yeah. And we have our buddy over the radio talking to us. After you activate the chemical injectors in the first two control rooms, you'll have to go into the central chamber and just like the autocon. So yeah, there's A, B, C, and D. We were supposed to uh, go to A, then to B, then to C, then to D. And every time we do one, uh, two of them, we're supposed to go to the middle room in between the two and. I think we destroy them somehow. I I fail to understand why there's a com a, a computer con a command to destroy chemical weapons, but I guess Probably there is. For the paranoid, <laughs> somebody would try and steal them. You know, I'm but starting to understand why Oscorp is going bankrupt. This company seems like it's run by a pack of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, too. We're getting some insight into Oscorp that we never thought we would get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 two, 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 two. You think that's expensive? Wait till you see the next quote unquote boss fight. Um, does that show up in this part, page or the next uh, part? I think so. Let me. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, deal. You're about to see why they're really going bankrupt. And this oh. somehow <laughs> destroys chemical weapons A and B. And apparently that's, oh, apparently that's what they're called. Chemical weapon A, chemical weapon B, chemical weapon C, and you chemical know, weapon have, D. You know, I have to wonder how Norman constructed this way. Okay, you see, I want these two particular concoctions to go into these two antennas so that if they get mixed together, they'll be destroyed and no one can steal it. But sir, why don't we just make a disposal system for it? Ah! It has to be like that in case someone's also trying to steal and destroy it from making me create it so that they won't be able to find out unless I have a rat in the works. 
I have a very specific vision, gentlemen. I guess, yeah. But, 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 sir, that, that'll be, logist that'll be a logistical nightmare. Ah, oh, this part. I hate this fucking room. It's practically impossible to get through without being detected. It's annoying. Look at this. Someone okay. I get, there's security and then there's this. So, okay, Dwibs, how do you think this went with Roman Osborne? Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, you, you, you know what I think we should do? This is the most important area in the room, and of course security is going to be very sensitive when it comes to security. So what I need you guys to do is to put lasers everywhere. And searchlights. Oh, Sir, what do you want us to prepare for? A human spider or something? Hey, it could happen. Right. This is the Marvel un happen. this is the same universe where we this is the same universe where we have fucking Nordic gods and scientists who turn green and muscular for some reason, so Although <laughs> is it really that much of a stretch? Well, fine, but hey, I draw the light at human spiders. If that happens, then I'm taking my daughter to Disney World just like she wants to. <laughs> Oh crap! There's a human spider. This fuck this. I'm moving. I'm moving over to a different comic franchise. Yes, I'm gonna go to Gotham City. That place is probably safer. <laughs> I'm moving to Hulk. I'm moving to. Hulk. Okay, here you go. So I'm supposed to get to that door. Okay. However, it's incredibly hard to get in there without actually touching any of these lasers. Look at this. I, I, I barely have any space to properly land there. I'm trying yeah. my. I'm trying my best to. Not touch any of the lasers. Trust me, I'm trying my best. Also, hey, Jova, at least Gotham City is still intact. Uh, and I failed. Uh, yeah. Jova, you okay? <laughs> the robots, the, the memories are coming back. The developers were really... After game over because of those stupid layers. Run, Pedro, run! The developers were really dickish with that room. Jesus yeah. Christ. Trust me, I have terrible memories of that from my childhood. I get, I get that you want the stuff to not just be easy peasy, but still, Jesus Christ! I mean, well, now I'm just, now I'm just gonna move on for the, for the lasers. Who cares, right? <laughs> yeah. All that hard yeah, work. Already, uh... Just run for it. Too. All right, now we have to destroy chemical weapon C and chemical weapon D. Uh, you see, you see, you see, Tay. What happened is the guy who comes up with the names for the weapons w was off that day, so. <laughs> Oh crap, the door's locked. Hmm. Be careful. Dr. Rue, the head of the project, seems to have figured out that something is wrong. He's headed your way. Well, shit. Because, of course, that dickhead scientist. Uh. Alright, I guess we have to kill Dr. Rui. That's his name, by the way, as you see there. We just have to find him and obtain the keycard. Our robots are by killing to kill him. us. By killing him. I'm not even kidding. We're literally going to kill him and get the keycard from him. <laughs> That's Spider more Spider Man, Spider Man, friendly neighborhood Spider Man. And there you go. Bye, Dr. Rui. <laughs> He's gone. And all that's left is his It's okay. Card. It's okay. It's okay. He was an evil scientist who just wanted to you <laughs> to create chemical weapons. So it's okay. We're good guys, I swear. <laughs> we broke and entered. We kind of broke the mom. security system. We killed a man. We are the good guys. We swear. <laughs> I'm uh I'm uh it's I'm like Pedro. It's like I the avatar in Ultima 8. No, oh, wait, God. no wait. No wait. See, um, I can explain. I see uh I uh I'm being controlled by a symbiote that's latched itself to my mind and is making me act all crazy. I can't see. So, any, so, I can't so, see sorry, jo sorry, Joe, but it's only two games from now. <laughs> okay. Basically, I'm trying to see huh. if I can lose them. Maybe we have with them. <laughs> Silly robots. Yeah, basically, if you spend a lot of time without being seen... Um... Uh-oh. Spider sense is tingling. Yeah. That yeah, is one Did you notice how the, the, the robot was moving slowly? Uh, much like in Metal Gear, if you spend a lot of t some time without being seen, eventually they'll um, they'll go back to patrolling. That is one neat thing about this game is like, well, even if your enemies are around a corner, Spider Man's Spidey Sense will go off and give you a proper warning. Yeah. So I remember, was there any mention of his Spider Sense in Homecoming? Um, uh, I don't I think, think th so. I, I, no, actually, I think there was one point where, the, yeah, uh, uh, I'll have to go back and oh, see, but I think there was. Me. 
that reminds me. How it should have ended made a video on how Spider-Man Homecoming, of course. And during the scene where Michael Keaton, you know, is talking to Peter in a car, telling him to stay away from a certain person, Peter asks why, and in the video he says, Because I'm Batman! <laughs> <laughs> also, I gotta say, yeah, um, Vulture is definitely one of the MCU's best villains for so many reasons. Again, like, Jeff, I, I know... Again, Joe, I, I still can't get over the, um, what? you know, the, the weirdness of how, how I took the involvement of another film studio for Marvel to get a decent villain. Well, okay, okay, okay. Well, I don't mean it just like that. What I mean is like, well, for the first time, we have an MCU film that focuses, I dare say, as much on the villain as it does the hero, like an equal sort In a of long sense. time, Loki did it essentially first. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. My, favorite scene, yeah. my favorite scene in that one was when he meant to punish the guy for messing up, but he ended up killing him by mistake. There we go, guys. We yeah. destroyed the chemical weapons. Yay. But, Yay. but don't, worry, so much accomplishment. don't worry, Tio. There's something more that needs to be done after this. Uh, the only thing, the only thing I can think of that may be hidden here is Electro. But yeah, no. how do you think he's going? I mean, Pedro, how do you think he's going to react when it shows up? It's about to. So let's see. The Super Mac is huge and powerful, but slow. You oh, you the game spoiled it. God damn it. Okay, <laughs> you know, I just want you to wait and see what's about to come. So, yeah, Chemical Warfare was one way to A giant Super Mac! A Super Mac that's as big as Long Island! Oh... <laughs> and now Peter Go. decides, I have to take this out for some reason! Why? Go on, game, you're drunk. <laughs> I don't know! It's just... Okay! This is turned into Peter Parker and Maybe, this is yeah, Metal Gear. Actually, yeah, this is literally Metal Gear. We need to destroy yeah. the Metal Gear before he launches the nukes. So, Tio! Your ta <laughs> so, Tio, citizens tax dollars were. I... So, Tio, yeah. now... The, so, uh, so, there you go, Tio. We finally saw... What's uh, uh, what's inside Oscorp? What do you think of Oscorp? What do you guys get up to in New York, Jova? So what do you think? Well, I guess it's I, I guess it's better than in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, where Oscorp is possible for anything. Yeah? So <laughs> this is where a lot of their money has been going into a giant robot that they're not even selling to the military. Uh, dudes, you want to make money? Why not sell this stuff to the military? Suppose maybe it's... it will steal. Maybe it will steal in you know final. Touches he needed before, you know, trying to sell it to the state. Well, apparently it's fully operational enough to try and attack us. And by the way, it has a skull for a face. Not just that, <laughs> but uh, of course, the the way to defeat it is you have to take down the ten generators that are powering it. Oh, Spider-Man is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. <laughs> So, uh, I, I kid you not. When I got to this part, I just laughed out loud. Like, what the okay, fuck? Like, <laughs> well, like, it, okay. it is something you will see like in the '60s cartoon. It's just like oh, I maybe mean, that's exactly know, it. Too, considering how the movies were clearly emulating the '60s Spider-Man rather than the the modern '80s comics at the time, um, it's most likely that uh, the game took uh, followed suit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's weird, though, I mean, well, the movies eventually did, you know, pay homage to the 80s one, especially when, you know, they did their good old mods to the death of Gwen Stacy with the bridge scene. But this is, this is, okay, 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 look. I'm not saying that, you know, this is out of place in a Spider-Man piece of media, I mean, but the problem is that it just comes out of nowhere. Like, yeah. you know, a, a giant robot that, as Peter himself said, is about the size of Long Island, it's not something you just bring it out of nowhere. That's like, that's like if, it's like if all of a sudden G.I. Joe decided to be a Transformers movie near the end. Or if the oh, Gem bro. movie decided to all of a sudden show My Little Pony near the end, just because Hasbro. <laughs> and by the oh, way, Shrey, I kid you not, uh, Hasbro at some point actually were planning to have a universe shared by Gem and the Holograms, of course, Transformers, so. G.I. Joe, and My Little Pony. That sounds like... Suicide. Not only yeah. that, but the live action stuff, mind you. Ugh. Live action My Little Pony. No, oh, thanks. The live action. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the. Uh. 
So, All right, only yeah. two more generators. So, so I, think, I think he meant like the live action gem and the holograms or something. I don't yes, know. Yes, that too. Or the sure. Bayformers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. what they think about it, Jova, despite all the quote unquote failures and everything, Hasbro is making a fuck ton of money thanks to the rights to these properties that are being transformed into movies. Yeah, yeah they, but they, so they, make, um, they make billions off MLP alone. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but re remember, guys. Um, with the recent exception of the Ouija films, every time Hasbro tried to make a film franchise out of something other than Transformers has blown up in their face. Oh, don't. No, the less said about Gem than the hologram. And Battleship. And G.I. Okay. Joe. Okay, There's seriously. And all of that. <laughs> oh, there it is. So, Pedro, how do you think the meeting with the dev team That's went for this? You know what this game needs based off is of the movie? Is that pulsating? Yes. Apparently. Now, <laughs> we have to attack it head on. Okay. Right, the, remember those missions in the the heart, Oscorp. First, we strike right. at the heart. Remember the remember the mission in the first Spider-Man game, where we had to destroy the generators, you know, on the PS One one. Yeah. Is this on? That was is, is that mission on steroids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right. And that's it. There you go. Nope. It's still got one last trick up its sleeves. Watch out! He's up to something. So Trey, what do you think of Treyarch's take on Oscorp? Um, five out of ten for the effort. <laughs> I love how even Peter says, "Yeah, you know, I need to try and find a way out of this crazy place." Reminder that you know somewhere else in this building is a regular conference building where you know execs just yeah. come and talk. Uh, no, but what's that noise? Oh, it's just uh, probably nothing. just some rats in the basement. <laughs> Don't worry, we're having. So let me get this straight. In this uh, particular game's universe, Oscorp not only has an incredibly convoluted um, security system, but also has chemical weapons uh, facility and a giant robot. <laughs> I, uh, that's an uh, addition to their battle glider and battle suit. Yeah. Um, All right, what was then. this company supposed to be for again? I Good thought... question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought no clue actually. <laughs> <laughs> Military uh, weapon? Yeah, supposedly that's what the movie establishes, but apparently the game developers didn't get the memo. They, I, just, I don't... <laughs> they just do whatever the fuck they want. All right, see you for the next part, everybody, where we yeah. where we finish the Spider-Man campaign. Believe All right. it or not, yeah, believe it or not, dealing with the Green Goblin is more sane than. See you, everybody. All right, yeah. see you.